Hey everybody, we're back. Let's go to uh, let's go to uh, mission two of typing of the dead overkill. I like this uh, intermission screen. Yeah, like a lot of things, a lot of this, um, a lot of things in this game are kind of ripped right from uh, right from Planet Terror and uh, Death Ride. Well, the uh, oh, Death uh, Proof. Death, death Proof. Proof. Yeah. Uh, mostly, like, really what happened is a couple of people who made, um, made House of the Dead saw Planet Terror and said, we want to make a House of the Dead game like this. So, this mission here is actually, um, this wasn't in the original House of the Dead, uh, House of the Dead Overkill, rather. I was gonna say, I don't remember this scene. This one was only in, let's see... Um, there was an extended cut for PlayStation 3 with the PlayStation Move that they released in 2011. Hmm, okay. And, uh, you know, they never put it on the Wii, and no one really got a chance to play it unless you played the PS3 version or, um, waited for this to come out on PC. Huh, okay. So there are two, basically two new levels in the game. Both starring uh, Varla and Candy Striper. Right. I love this because she basically picked up, like, the best guns in the game. You know, if you're playing on normal. Because you, you start out with the normal six-shooter and you can just basically buy upgraded guns like that. But because we're playing Typing of the Dead, we just we have no use for any guns or upgrades. You can't even really use your um, you know, your points for completing the level. You can't really use those to kind of buy anything. So the only thing you yeah the only thing you use your points for in this game is to uh, uh, if you die, you use points to continue. What do you mean? How many points is it to continue? Uh, not a lot. Bas you basically have infinite lives, and even then, I think I've—I think I had to continue one time. Oh, okay. Oh no, my baby's been wheeled away by another woman. No, I forgot that Jasper's taken that she was great dating Jasper, or something, or whatever the hell this game wants us to believe. <laughs> See, I don't even know if they actually mentioned her in the original game, because I think this was all like new stuff for me at least. Yeah, hmm. It's possible that. I wonder if she was in the PS3 version. She was. These two stages are the only two that she's in. Um, like, this stage, and I think it's, like, one of the later ones. They, they bring the two of them back. Oh, right, right, yeah. Here. He would have wanted you to have this. I love, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> now dry your eyes. We've got a scumbag to kill. Fuck, where are my keys? <laughs> oh, Coco and Cindy took your bike. They wanted to go to the biker bar. As much as I missed uh, Detective Washington really? commenting on everything, Anything though, that know? that was yeah. like the highlight Just of the game. That... Right. <laughs> Never mind. Get ready to be titillated. I also love all the alliteration that they use. Yeah. Tetrises. The announcer they got for this game were fucking. It was fucking great. Of course. Oh, definitely. That witness naked desire, naked lust, naked terror. But don't only keep both hands on the controller. Oh man. All right. So yeah, like I was mentioning, kind of in the last video, the um, combo score in this. Is, if you you can kind of see the five chambers up there. Every time yes. you get a word correct without any mess up, you get a gold bullet. If you mess up one time, you get a silver bullet. Every time you get five, you get uh, extreme violence. You get a, a modifier. Oh. I think you can go up to five, which is gorgasmic. <laughs> but hey, you know, we're in a script club, so let's put on the most appropriate custom DLC that we possibly can with the <laughs> Sterling Archer Words to Rampage by... Custom DLC. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, you know, I I I recorded. I, I, I by the way, love that you shoot you shoot a berry. Yeah, I was just gonna say. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah. I gotta say, for the most part, like uh, I I I did both this one normally, and I did this one with uh 
with the Archer one, and they're pretty much the same. Because a lot of them are just like womanizing shit and different types of alcohol. <laughs> and the normal one is womanizing shit and a ton of alcohol. Rampage! Rampage. Those both could be used in this game too. Uh, it, it's perfect. Are they giving a new season at all? Uh, I, I can see no reason why FX would not, you know, keep giving them everything they want. Say, yeah. This this library doesn't seem uh <laughs> this library doesn't seem as intense as say the Homestar Runner one. So it's like a good, it seems like a, a better balance. The real good ones in this game have like a good range of words like of just uh, whoa a good range of ones of just different like you know lengths. So they kind of spread out naturally. Um, some of them are like unbelievably gigantic. Some of them are like. There's one that's literally called Press X to Win, and it turns everything into X. Oh, that's awesome. That's my stage, bitch. But yeah, we'll be seeing we'll be seeing some interesting ones. Um, but this one, like, this is perfect for this stage. I also love that they don't they didn't really like program they program the uh, zombie attacks in this game kind of weird like every zombie in this game will attack regardless of whether or not they're close enough to you to do damage or not so like you saw all the zombies there behind that uh, wall and even though they can't get to you they're still gonna they attack still... yeah there'll be a couple times when like three or four zombies will kind of pile up next to each other to attack me and. There'll be ones three or four behind that'll still be attacking. They just won't be in distance to, you know, do any damage. Oh, okay. It's an interesting system, and it works really well for this game. I know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of like, oh man, there must be moments where it's like, you know, they obviously you have to rely on, if you're starting to type this really long phrase, you're going to want them to stagger. Exactly. Because realistically, you wouldn't be able to finish that before they could get to you. By the way, I couldn't I couldn't shut this one off until we got to tactile neck. But we got oh. the tactile we got the tactile neck, the tactical turtleneck. So <laughs> we can go back to normal gameplay for just a little bit. Alright. It won't be for long. Whoa. Yeah. So I like this. Um, if you shoot the pink peril. Yeah, oh is that fall? Yep. Oh, uh, that's great. And just cuts them all up. Looks like closing time on a but let's go to the second um, custom dictionary of this, which is one of my personal favorites. The JoJo's Bizarre Adventure custom dictionary. Now, for those who haven't read it, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is a wonderful manga and anime where pretty much every character is named after a musical reference. or um, they, have, they actually have a ton of different naming conventions for the series. Uh, but, so you'll see, it'll basically kind of look like we're just typing a bunch of fan names, and yeah, that's, that's kind of what it is. But, one really good thing about this is, at least for the first, um, for the first, like, couple of enemies and characters, all of their, uh, stands, which are their powers, are named after, uh, tarot cards, like Lovers, or Strength, or, uh, Platinum, or rather, Star Platinum. And that kind of fits the whole House of the Dead series, because with this game being the exception, um, all the House of the Dead series have tarot cards for the names of their bosses. Which I always loved. I love the designs of those bosses, too. I thought they were always awesome. It's, it's Sega really at their best. I'm, I don't know, I'm a big sucker for the House of the Dead series. I played 2 on Dreamcast so fucking much. Oh god, 2 was so good. I love the music that plays uh, before you fight Magician. Oh, yeah. It's so good. And that game really got popular kind of for... Um, it got popular because you know, it had really bad voice acting and a lot of camp value, even though I thought it you know was a great game on its own. 
Oh, yeah. And that's kind of what they went for when they decided to make this game, was to really up that camp value fucking to, to like, top, top tier. Oh, yeah. In this case, I feel like it, it's good in a different way, where I, it, it feels self-aware of it, obviously. But, like, the has the Dead 2 and, like, Older has the Dead, it's like, I felt like they were sincere, but trying to be serious. So it's a different type of... Like this, no, this is this is definitely trying to be funny, and it, it, it's it's funny in a different way where it plays off of you know certain things. But uh, yeah, both are both are cool. There, it's kind of funny because while doing a little bit of research for this, there are so many weird games in the House of the Dead series. Oh, like yeah. um, Typing of the Dead, the original one looked pretty weird because they were just like a Dreamcast with a keyboard strapped to their backs. But there's also mm-hmm. A uh, pinball of the dead that was released for Game Boy. That's right. There was a game only made in Japan uh, called English of the Dead that was designed to help Japanese speakers learn uh, better English skills. That's awesome. There was also um, House of the Dead EX, which is a humorous, um, weird spinoff where you have to play. As either a male or female uh, zombie, who like you're, you're two zombies in love who seek to escape from captivity, and you have to do a bunch of mini games to help you get out. It's actually closer to like um, the Rub Rabbits. That I was just about to say, like that's, that's actually kind of freaking awesome. I really would love to see that. There's also a game called Zombie Revenge from 1999 that was a beat 'em up. Uh, where you have to play as a- AMS agents, um, and it includes the Kyrian Mansion. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Yeah, so, like, this is definitely the most, like, bizarre one, but this is not, like, the this is not like the only kind of weird game that they made uh, for House of the Dead. Also, we're near the boss again, so let's, uh, let's go back to, uh, to normal ones for the boss itself. Oh, okay. But yeah, um, I don't know, the House of the Dead series really kind of never um, took, like, it's weird because there are some people who take this um, series of games really fucking seriously, but oh yeah, I don't know, this has always been one of like Sega's like weirder ones, but I, th- th- that one I really want to play because I, I fucking love Rub Rabbits and Feel the Magic. Absolutely. God, I, I never played Rub Rabbits, but I really loved Field of Magic. Um, I'm assuming it was just it was more of the same. In a way. Pre- pretty much. I remember I played Field of Magic because they were like, I bought every game that came out for DS's launch. Nice. What was that? Mario 64, Field of Magic. Um, God, what else was there? Well, we'll get to that in a second. So yeah. this is the second boss. Um, kind of meant to be like I believe it's Judgment, the first boss of the House of the Dead Two, uh, where you have yeah. to shoot at the little guy, or in this case the little girl mutant thing. Um, it's real easy for this. They give you plenty of time to take her out. You don't even have to aim. Just uh, you can also tell by the way there's a boss attack meter on the bottom, uh-huh. and the boss health. You just have to shoot the. Uh, you have to get two completed phrases in. To stop the attack from happening. Okay. And there's alliteration for both, and they're they're both they're all pretty funny. Uh, tearful, tickling, high homunculus, stuff like that. It, it's pretty nifty. I, I'm gonna leave the boss fights in normal, no like custom dictionaries for that. Cause they're all pretty interesting. Right. But yeah, so I I played Field of Magic because yeah, they're like the launch the launch for um the DS was like Mario 64. Uh, Ray, the terrible Rayman 64 port. Oh, that's right. And that uh, Yoshi's Touch and Go, which I thought was one of the biggest ripoffs out there. What was that like? It was like a, it was literally like a demo that they decided to make into a full game, but didn't have a boss or an ending. It was it was it was weird, but um, a lot of games for that kind of made like real gimmick. You know, all gimmick games based on the touchscreen, and I felt that uh, Field of Magic was the first one that had kind of heart to it. You're right. No, absolutely. Field of Magic definitely played into its, like, weirdness and its, like, you know, potential mechanics, like, right off the bat. I was just like, oh, this is cool. This is actually kind of impressive. 
But yeah, so, again, this boss is pretty easy. You just have to either complete the word and shoot the barrel, or stop the word halfway and then shoot the barrel. Oh, okay. Huh. So we're treated to another just fucking delightful cutscene here. Oh. Ah, I love the gross textures in this game. Yeah, they're really bad. Oh, the little marks and, like, dents in that fat body. It's just like, the, ugh. I don't even know where the hell the nipple is. Yeah. <laughs> that is the nipple. It, it, she is just one gigantic nipple. Just one big gigantic nipple. fucking bitches all over again. What happened to them? So yeah, they Damn if I know. they kind of explain what the hell is going on later on, but I think this this game never really tries to give story. Like it always know it always knows that like any any you know it's secondary, and I kind of like that about it. Oh yeah, totally. You don't need to have a serious exposition, or if you're gonna have a serious exposition, play it up to a point where you're just ridiculous. But yeah, it really doesn't need it. Fuck! I don't need to hear that. Now let's get you this the game knows what it is. And we need more games like that. Oh, totally. Because remember, this came out around the time that they made a bunch of uh, kind of uh, older game or games are aimed at kind of older players from Sega. This Mad World and uh, Con, uh, like something, something like Convolt. Con Conduit. What was it called? Conduit, I think. Oh, Conduit. That's right. That first-person shooter. Yeah, I don't know. They were all real kind of unique games from Sega, and I, uh, they're some of my favorite Sega games out there. But we will continue this next time. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next video. All right, take care.